What's on with everybody? It's your boy Mookie Jones for Radar Sports and Base, man. Before we get into this episode, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications. We got a great video for y'all today. Make sure you stay tuned. So as y'all know, man, a couple of days ago, uh, former number one draft pick and Kwame Brown had some criticism for LeBron James and his game four performances, man. And he basically called LeBron James out from not being aggressive, not asserting himself, um, and not putting his team on his back to win a game, right? And, um, you know, he got some criticism. Um, everybody... Uh, gave Kwame Brown the smoke. And um, one guy that stepped up this morning in full, full force of LeBron James' defense team is number one, Lee Shannon Sharp, right? And Shannon Sharp, man, to me, right, is the number one bronze sexual in the world, right? Uh, we seen him end up fighting guys over LeBron James. We even seen him calling LeBron James honey, on LeBron James, King James, and he's the gold, and um, you know, just wearing a LeBron James jersey, and bro, his fan boyism for LeBron James is just absolutely crazy, right? It's crazy. Um, but he came on undisputed and called out um, Kwame Brown, and this is what he had to say. Y'all take a look. I'm still on what what what's his end game here? You talking about what Kobe would have done? What would you have been done? What would you have done? <laughs> You're number one overall pick. Yeah. I, I don't get it because LeBron was in a no-win situation. People say, LeBron, why would you set a 4-3? Why would you shoot a step back this? He drives the ball. Jamal Murray does a great job of tying him up. And that even as he holds on to the ball, he's trying to get the shot up. Aaron Gordon blocks it. Now you're saying, well, he should have pulled up. It's easy to say what you should have done after the fact of knowing what has happened. Yep. And, and Skip, he said, you're supposed to be great. Really, Kwame, of all the people, he should never, ever question anybody's greatness. Because this is what we know. If there's a Mount Rushmore for bust mm -hmm. in the NBA history, whether he's the first head, the second head, the third, or the fourth, he's on Mount Rushmore of bust NBA players. There's no question. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to question a guy that, whether you say he's first, second, he's top five of the greatest players to ever play. I remember I heard him talk when Kobe scored 81. He's talking about he's sitting damn good screens. Really? Dude, you're the number one pick in the draft, and you talk about you setting screens. Yep. Talk about the games that you played. Talk about the game when the shots you hit. Skip, look, I get Kobe and Mike was graceful. They were elegant. They were Barishnikov. Yep. But it's just not true. They haven't hit more game winning shots than LeBron. The numbers don't lie. You can just go look it up, Kwame. You have plenty of time. Hell, you're on your farm down in, there, down in Georgia. You got plenty of time. You ain't playing no hoops. You should still be in the NBA. But you want to take a shot because this is your thing, Skip. Look what he did. Everybody, he was, he was trending. Mm. He got exactly what he wanted. Okay. He trended more for saying something. Because sometimes, Skip, the only success you can have is taking a bite out of somebody that's successful. He trended more for what he said about LeBron than anything he ever done in the NBA. That's a fact. Now, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. Now, my response to that is that, damn, Shannon, you really had to step that low just to defend LeBron James? We understand that Kwame Brown is, is not nowhere good as LeBron James. We understand that he's a bust, right? Um, but the one thing you got to understand for Kwame Brown, he did make it to the NBA. He did, um, help his family out. He did, um, move his family out the hood and put them in houses and stuff like that. So, um, he was, he had a successful life. So you can't criticize Kwame Brown for that. Uh, yes, on the basketball court, he was a bust, but long story short, you had to stoop that low. You had to call this man a bust. You had to call him all types of names. Because he was cooking your king, LeBron James? He was holding LeBron James to the standard that you called him the greatest player of all time? You getting mad at Kwame Brown for keeping it real about LeBron James? That's sad. That's sad. You did not have to come out there on Undisputed with millions of people watching across the world. It just trashed the man's career like that because... He's keeping it real about LeBron James. He's giving LeBron James the same standard that you hold everybody else with. Right? 
LeBron James in that Denver Nuggets series did not play well. He was terrible. He caused his team to win the game in that Western Conference Finals. Multiple games. And the fact in the second half he only scored nine points, was not aggressive, that it had no go-to move, right? He don't have no in-between game. He ain't got no midi pull-up. He ain't got no dribble pull-up. It's all relied on athleticism, bulldozing guys over the rim. When he couldn't bulldoze Eric Gordon and them other guys to the rim, he didn't make that clutch shot. And, you, and I heard you say LeBron James is clutcher than Jordan and Kobe. But long story short, this is what Kwame Brown had to say in the response. Man, y'all go take a look. You a guest in the house of this basketball talk. Didn't you know that? And now, since you don't want to act like a guest in this shit, and you want to invalidate me, you football playing dummy. Nigga, it ain't no first downs in basketball, clown. How you going to try to invalidate a man who was the number one draft pick, boy? You want to try to put some bass in your voice when you talking to me? When you on a panel with a nigga that buckled you down, boy? You on a panel with a white boy that blamed his coach for not making it to college, and you want to try to invalidate me, nigga? Are you a clown or what? I'm so glad that you just exposed yourself, you clown. You think you're going to put some bass in your voice when you talking to me, nigga? And that white boy made you say, ah, oh, I'm just trying to let me finish. Let me finish. You a guest in this house of basketball, nigga. Ain't no first downs in motherfucking basketball, you big, tall, thick-tongued punk motherfucker. You a thick-tongued idiot. Did you not know that? Ain't no first downs in basketball, boy. So I don't know what make you think that your opinion on basketball is more than mine because you a fanboy for LeBron. You a you call me emotional and you was finna fight a whole goddamn Memphis Grizzly team because of your love affair, LeBron. You the reason why John Morant probably carrying guns right now. John Morant was like, oh shit, a big ass nigga in a sweater, a grandma sweater trying to fight his daddy and the whole damn team. You the reason why. I think John Moran ain't trying to be no thug. He carrying guns everywhere because he's scared of goddamn Shannon Sharp fanboy ass. John Moran, put them guns down, boy. Get you some of this tactical shit right here. Get you some of this right here for a big, thick tongue punk. Do what you need. Spray that big, thick tongue motherfucker in the eye. You fanboy and calling somebody emotional and you about to fight a whole damn team about LeBron. You supposed to be a damn analyst, not a fanboy. You ain't nothing but a fucking fanboy. You done lost your goddamn mind. That motherfucking testosterone must have hit you. The old man, did he cook? Shed is sharp and told the truth about this man, man. Shed is sharp don't have no reason to call nobody emotional. Like Kwame Brown said, when he attacked a whole Memphis Grizzlies team in the defense of LeBron James. Shed is sharp has no reason to say somebody's emotional. Right? When we have seen so many times when Skip Bayless called LeBron James out and he go on this rampage of getting mad and getting upset and getting in his feelings because somebody's speaking the truth about LeBron James. Right? But meanwhile, Shannon Sharp is on a platform, right? Where Skip Bayless is telling this man whatever what to do. Skip Bayless told this man, shut up, you ain't gonna do nothing. What did Shannon Sharp do? He shut up and he didn't do nothing. But Shannon Sharp want to get in his feelings because somebody's calling LeBron James out. Make that make sense. If if Rated R Sports Debates had a debate, right, and we're cooking somebody's favorite player, and somebody getting it, and then all of a sudden in the debate, somebody just go personal with this guy and just call him all types of names and right there, you know the guy is losing the debate. You know the guy is losing the argument, right? Shannon Sharp know that the points that Kwame Brown is making is something that you can't dispute. And what does Shannon Sharp do on Undisputed with millions of people watching? He want to come out there and attack this man's career. And sit there and say, oh, you, you, you're, you're, you're a number one draft pick. You're a bust, right? You're, you're terrible, right? 
but he still don't have the right and the opinion to speak about the game? Make that make sense. Tanner Sharp, you never played basketball, right? You're a football player. But you still have an opinion of talking a game of basketball. Am I right, Shannon Sharp, right? So why can't Kwame Brown have his opinion? Why can't Kwame Brown have constructive criticism about LeBron James? Why does the fanboy have to take it personal? Why? Shannon Sharp is what we label Braun sexual, bro. A bronze sexual. And he's one of the wildest bronze sexuals because he's actually willing to throw hands defending LeBron James. He's weird. He has a sexual affection with LeBron James. Santa Sharp, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong, bro. You're wrong. Let me know what y'all think about this thing between Kwame Brown and Shannon Sharp. Make sure you smash the like button, hit the bell for notification. I'll holler at y'all in the next episode.